Hello everyone, welcome to Roman Just Codes. I'm Roman and in this episode we'll be setting up the project for our Flutter app that we will use to control smart devices around the house. Make sure to catch the previous video in the series so you can watch and learn more about the device setup and specs. This is what we'll be building, a Flutter app with light and dark theming as well as responsiveness so we can support both phones and tablets. I'm planning on using this app on some repurposed mobile device and tablets and install them around the house. This app will consist of a splash screen, an intro page where I'll lazy load some data and assets, a landing or shell page to handle some of the nested navigation for a home, rooms, devices, and settings pages, as well as pages for device and room details. The extent of this video series is up to toggling switches on and off. We'll add some basic adding and removing device functionality. I'll leave it up to you if you want to take it further or just keep a watch on the repo provided for the full extent of the project as I make more updates. Let's get started. I'll create it from scratch. I'll create a brand new project called Flicky Home Automation. Yeah, that's what I'm calling my app, Flicky, because you can flick devices on and off. I'll set up the iOS emulator for testing. I'll add the first three packages I'll be using in this project. Flutter Riverpod for state management, Go Router for routing, and Flutter Animate for animations. At the root of the project, I'll create an assets folder with fonts and animation subfolders for my custom fonts and Rive animations respectively. More on this later. I'll be following a feature-first approach when it comes to architecting this project, where I'll have a folder for each feature. I'll have a helpers folder for helper utilities, enums, constants, etc a styles folder for my colors, theming, font definitions, etc. Each feature will contain a data and presentations of folders underneath each feature. Data will contain the models and repositories, and the presentation will hold all my widgets, page widgets, providers, view models, responsive configuration, anything UI related. Inside the helpers folder, let's add a utils.dart class that will hold some global keys to programmatically access root navigation elements and scaffolds. Inside a routes folder, add an app.routes.dart file, which will house all my navigation strategy definition. More on this later. In the styles folder, add a colors.dart file, which will contain all the color definitions I'll use throughout my app for both light and dark theme. Create a styles.dart file to hold style definitions, such as spacing, padding, margins, borders, text styles, kind of like a root CSS. In the assets slash fonts folder, I'll drag my custom fonts. I'll use the product sans family of fonts. Make sure to add the font configuration in the popspec.yaml. I'll go ahead and quickly create my own custom icon font from the SVGs I created in my Figma mockup. I'll export all SVGs, go to fluttericon.com, drag them in there, then generate my custom font, which gives me a generated TTF file and a corresponding generated Dart file with all my font mappings. Let's test the product sans fonts first. Okay, font looks good. Now let's proceed to test the icon fonts. Of course, I gotta add the font configuration in the popspec.yaml first. Nice, all my custom fonts are all set. With that, let's blow up the main.dart and start from scratch. I'll create a root app widget called Home Automation App, wrapped inside a provider scope. Doing it now so I don't forget it later. Return a material app and let's test the icon font again just as a sanity check that things are still good. I'm gonna need an intro feature, which will house the splash and loading pages. Create a basic stateless widget for the splash page and define a static string property for its route. We'll do that for all pages moving forward. Let's do the same treatment for the loading page.
Let's go back to the app routes class to define our initial routes. We'll create a GoRouter instance with the splash page route as the initial location and map the navigator key to the global key in the utils called main nav. Add the routes for each of our two initial pages, splash page and loading page. Refactor the material app widget to use the material app.router version, which takes the router information and delegate properties to be able to hook up to the Go Router navigation strategy. So let's start small. The splash page will load first, wait for a little bit, then navigate to the loading page. For that, we'll use a simple future.delayed for now with a two second delay, then use the Go Router to navigate to the loading page. Hey, looks ugly, but it works. We're missing a material-based widget returning out of these pages, so let's make it prettier by just returning a scaffold widget wrapping the page content. There, happy? And with that, we've set up the initial plumbing for this app, on top of which we'll build the rest of the infrastructure. In the next video, I'll continue with more plumbing work by setting the theming for the app. It's better to do it earlier in the process, so let's take care of that in the next video. See you there. Hey there, I am Roman from Roman Just Codes. I hope that you found the content of this video very useful. And if you did, make sure to like it and subscribe to this channel. You know subscribing to this channel is free, right? Thank you so much for watching.